This video is the first in a series of videos on the lives of stars, and this video will deal with the birth of stars, uh, at least prepare some of the background. I'll not cover all of, uh, of this in, uh, in one video. And the material here deals with uh, chapter 13 from astronomynotes.com. So with the uh, lives of stars, we're, we're interested, how long do they live? How long will they be shining and uh, available for us to view? Longer than a human lifetime? Yes. Well, how do stars form? There's some good uh, evidence, scientific evidence, that gives us clues on the formation of stars, and we'll be discussing that. And what happens to stars as they go through their lives? What changes do they have to their radius, to their surface temperature? Those are important quantities, of course, for uh, plotting the stars on the HR diagram. And the HR diagram will be crucial as we uh, seek to understand the lives of stars. And then how do stars die? Of course, this is going to take several lectures to uh, cover this material. This particular <clears throat> excuse me, introduction deals with star birth to the main sequence. Um, astronomers can run computer models that uh, can calculate how long it takes a star to go through its fuel. And these computer models say for the very massive stars, it's a few hundred thousand years. That's still a long time compared to a human. And at the low mass end of the uh, range of stars, these stars have enough fuel for billions of years. The low mass stars do not use the fuel at a high rate. If you recall, high mass stars have high temperatures in the core, and that uh, has a great effect on the rate of fusion. Now we can also ask, how can astronomers be confident of theories about the stages in the life of a star when we can't really follow one star from birth to death. So there is an observing technique that uh, has provided astronomers with uh, uh, confirmation of the theories. So if we're taking a look at a, at a star and suppose a star has a life of 10 billion years, that's uh, about the lifetime of the Sun. Um, so about 10 billion years. A human astronomer, suppose, lives 75 years and starts studying stars at a very early age and uh, studies them all through uh, the 75 years. Um, to put this on a comparison, if we make the 75 years the lifetime of the star, then the lifetime of the human is 20 seconds out of the 75 years. 20 seconds out of 75 years that's comparable to 75 years of a human lifetime to 10 billion years. So there's a real difficulty on how uh, we can gather enough information if uh, we're just seeing the stars for 20 seconds out of a 75 year lifetime. How would you uh, learn about humans, the lifetime of humans from birth to death, if you only had 20 seconds to gather information? That's all that you were allowed. So if you have uh, someone to talk to, uh, the students in my class will be talking to the people who sit next to them. Uh, but uh, talk to yourself if you, if you don't have someone to talk to. But don't argue with yourself. Just talk to yourself. And where would you uh, go to uh, gather data if you only had 20 seconds to gather that data and you want to understand the lives of humans? So... Think about that a little bit. Pause the video if you need to. But I'm going to continue. Uh, so the lifetime of a star. We, we know that the mass has a big effect on the luminosity. And the stars have very similar compositions. Hydrogen and helium. There's some variation, but it's not a major effect. We don't, uh, you know, on the main sequence, we don't have stars that are all helium and no hydrogen. The stars on the main sequence are fusing hydrogen in their core to produce helium. Um, so on the main sequence, its mass is the variable that controls the lifetime of the star. The reason for this is, of course, the mass affects the temperature of the core, and the temperature of the core governs the rate of fusion of the, uh, of the material. There's, a, there's some effect of density, but um, we're not going to go into all that details. So we'll concentrate on just temperature. So the lifetime of the star, we could calculate it this way. If we take the amount of fuel we have and divide by the rate that fuel is consumed, we would get the lifetime. Um, 
So you have sort of a, uh, a similar situation with a car. Uh, you have a certain amount of fuel in the tank. You use a certain number of gallons every mile. Hopefully not too many. Uh, but that would calculate how many miles you could go with the car. So a similar thing here with stars. The amount of hydrogen they have in their cores to, uh, to use for fuel. And divide by how fast, how much hydrogen per year, essentially, they're uh, using up that fuel. So here's bringing it back to the car example and uh, a little phrase a little different way. So car A can only hold 15 gallons in the tank and it uses one gallon every 30 minutes. So the tank will be empty after 15 times 30 minutes, 450 minutes. Car B has a 25 gallon tank and uses one gallon of fuel every 15 minutes. So that tank will be empty faster, 375 minutes. Even though it had more fuel, it used it up faster. So the lifetime of the star goes in the same uh, type of sense. We take the mass of the star compared to the sun. We divide by mass to the fourth power. Mass to the fourth power. That's the luminosity. That's the energy output. That's the rate of using fuel. And multiply by 10 billion years the lifetime of the sun. That will be our calculation for a rough estimate of the lifetime of a star. And uh, suppose we have two times the mass of the sun, so two for the fuel, two to the fourth power here. The fourth power gives us a 16, and use a calculator, and you find 1.2 billion years for the lifetime of that star. A star more massive than the sun, twice as massive as the sun, does not live 10 billion years, even though it has twice as much fuel. It's burning it at a great rate compared to the sun's rate, and it only lasts 1.2 billion years. So there's our first video. Hope that you uh, absorb some of that and uh, keep up with the... Uh, the reading and asking questions for your instructor.